ladies and gentlemen, tonight's Bound for Glory event. It emanates from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, a city that exemplifies the blue collar attitude and the unparalleled work ethic as well as American pride. We welcome you to the birthplace of America and we welcome you to Bound for Glory. to introduce you to my new business partner, Dixie Carter. There is no single name that defines an industry more than Hulk Hogan. You have been caught. I now control 100% of TNA. anything and everything that it takes to get to where you are right now and I believe that you can beat Kurt Angle at Bound for Glory for the world title. If you take care of Hulk Hogan and I take care of Kurt Angle, then together you and I, Stinger, you and I will finally get this company back to where it belongs. To where it belongs. you at Bound for Glory, and if you can beat me, I'll give the company back to you and Dixie Carter. And now, TNA Wrestling and Direct Auto Insurance present the biggest pay-per-view of the year, Bound for Glory. Tonight, live from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Bound for Glory Series winner Bobby Roode challenges Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle for the World Heavyweight Championship. And the insane icon Sting fights the immortal Hulk Hogan for company control. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike Tanay and Taz, and we welcome you to the biggest pay-per-view event of 2011, Bound for Glory. Future direction of this organization will be determined tonight both in terms of inside the ring and outside as well. Taz, let's start with outside. Power and control of this company is at stake when Sting fights Immortals Hulk Hogan. Well, let's face it, Mike, the company you and I work for, the thousands in attendance here, the millions at home, at home that are watching us right now. I mean, the company hangs in the balance. Who is gonna have control by the end of the night? We're gonna find out here about the glory. Will Hogan maintain control of TNA or Will Sting get control and give it back to Dixie Carter? In terms of inside the ring, Bobby Roode, Bound for Glory Series winner to challenge World Heavyweight Champion Kurt Angle. Everybody's saying this is Bobby Roode's time. The guy has been on a roll, he's been red hot. I mean, he's got momentum in his side, but he's got a deal with an Olympic gold medalist and a multi-time World Heavyweight Champion in Kurt Angle. Let's go, Bound for Glory, let's get it kicked off. And we open our Bound for Glory pay-per-view with a championship match, X Division title on the line. Kendrick, former X Division champion, 
We saw recently on Impact Wrestling, Kendrick became the number one contender for the title, winning a five-man ladder match. He earns this title opportunity. Well, this is Kendrick here. Yeah, I mean, look, we are right smack dab in the middle of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, one of the most hardcore cities you ever could find in the U.S. And Brian Kendrick, well, he's not that style. He's a little bit different. He's a little quirky. He's a little bit of an oddball. He's flat out nuts, in my opinion. Look at him. He's just slithering around. He's got some kind of juju beads and his on his neck. From Minneapolis, Minnesota, the X Division champion, Austin Aries. How about the champion? Here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, A double, Austin Aries. Nobody is as confident as he is, especially when it comes to his own abilities. A massive ovation right here, man, for, for Austin Aries. He's got a history uh, in this town. And I'll tell you what, Austin Aries, he can get it done. I think people understand that. Sure, people don't, maybe don't like, people don't like his arrogance, his certain swagger he has. He's extremely cocky, but you cannot discount this man's talent. I'm a big fan of this guy's style in that ring. Defending champion, A-double, Austin Aries proudly displays his X Division gold to this huge crowd on hand here in Philadelphia. What a great event. Brown for Glory is brought to you by Direct Auto Insurance, and we kick it off with this special title match. Referee Brian Hebner, that's what's at stake as he holds the belt high. And that's what it's about. You're right, Mike, right there. That X Division title that Kendrick once had. Can he regain it? We find out now. I think in terms of competition, the redefining of the X Division, especially putting on that 225 pound weight limit, is going to be good for all the competitors in the division. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, it kind of is more structured that way. Well, this capacity crowd here, definitely behind Austin Aries. Well, you suggested that they might be, and certainly judging by the chance, that's the case. Yeah, well, I don't know a lot about a lot of things, but I know wrestling crowds of Philadelphia. You certainly do. Talk about your early stomping grounds. It was Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Taz, where initially you made your name. Yeah, I'm very proud of that, and, and it's, it's great to see Two young, tremendous athletes that we're watching right now in Aries and Kendrick get it done right here in Philadelphia. Great, rich history in this city throughout great business. Nice side headlock applied by Austin Aries. A lot more powerful than he looks for a man his size. He's got that thing in tight, but Kendrick able to scoot him off. How about the power of Aries right there? This is just suggested again. Right back at him, leapfrog over by Kendrick and then the high hip toss. Well, that's the thing, nice side, quick headlock, take down and right back to it. But then every time he does that, it's the champ quickly taking him off of that side head scissors and yeah. once again the third time. Well, Kendrick is not allowing, which is smart, Aries to hook in that head scissor, completely lock it in because Aries keeps, I'm sorry, yeah, Kendrick keeps countering out very quickly. Challenger connects with a drop kick that sends Aries out to the floor. And Aries calling time here, gonna try and regroup. Well, as everybody knows, there's really no timeouts in pro wrestling. But uh, Aries probably tried to get one, but almost got knocked out by that kick by Kendrick. Watch Kendrick! Airborne, slingshot in, cross body block down on the arena floor. Brian Kendrick knows if they're booze, chairs, he's in his own world. Think he cares? No, he's in his own little zen world, wherever the hell Kendrick lives mentally. Well, I really don't know. In that zone, cross body off the top, right into the pin. Look at that. Kendrick looked like he was grabbing at his front of his shin, I believe. Nice monkey flip by Brian Kendrick. And Kendrick measures the champ. Back at him again, and a second monkey flip takes Aries over. Watch Kendrick, very quick. Ah, 
to the well too many times if I have to loop, use that cliche, unfortunately, but it fits. And then pays as Aries comes flying out of the corner with the clothesline. Yeah, that clothesline was definitely massive impact on the throat and neck area of Brian Kendrick. That's what you don't want if you're Kendrick. You don't want to be in a part of a match where Austin Aries can kind of pick his spot and dismantle you. Well, plays body slam, so watch this. Look at that, look at that. Tremendous athleticism by Austin Aries, the exhibition champion. Hit a steam off the ropes. Drops the elbow right into the pinning predicament. That elbow was right in the rib cage of Brian Kendrick. Boy, doubly effective, that kind of a move. Not only the pain aspect, but also taking the wind away from the challenger. Correct, the breathing makes it tough for you to get air in and out of your lungs. And it seems like uh, each time that Kendrick tries to get out of the blocks, that, whoop, whoop, that uh, Austin Aries shuts down Brian Kendrick. It's the mark of a veteran and a guy who knows how to get it done in the ring. Keep your opponent behind the eight ball as long as you can, and then hit him with something and beat him. The cocky champ that brings that win at all costs attitude to the X Division. Drops down with the fist, gonna hook the near leg this time for two. Yeah, I mean, listen, Austin Aaron's been the first to tell you he's like the greatest man in the world. What does he say? Did yeah. He, something like that, right? Aries dictating to the crowd here in Philadelphia. Sets up Kendrick and Ooh. drops the knee right between the shoulder blades. Yeah, tight right to the spine. And now Austin Aries definitely grounding Brian Kendrick, which is smart. Brian's very fast, fleet-footed athlete. Hence why he's a perfect fit in the X Division, the former X Division champion. If you want to ground a guy like that. And in terms of Kendrick, it's getting back up to the base as he does, back up to his feet. Gonna try and get things going with a couple of forearm shots, but then cut off again. Beautiful high collar to that outer leg sweep. Uh-oh, gonna set up Kendrick now. He loves to get that momentum going with the pendulum elbow. Toying and playing with the crowd now is the champ. He telegraphed the pendulum. The big Kendrick. roll up. Kendrick's got him. No, just two. I was swamped by Kendrick. Need him right in the face. Series. Well, that was the uh, fly forearms to the head. That was the opening oh. that Kendrick needed. Was uh, Aries getting a little too cocky? Series of kicks, but I think that that last one, the third one, missed. As Aries points out exactly how smart he was to avoid the contact. Nice. Sledge to the back. Beautiful. Aries never saw it coming. Got him. Oh. And he turned up. Uh, Kendrick turned Aries inside out with that double up. Uh, axe handle right to the back of the head. Kendrick going to go high risk all the way to the top. Aries tried to cut him off. Ooh, that stopped him right in mid move. That time quickly down with the pendulum elbow into the pin, the lateral press, but still just two. That's the thing when Aries, you see he's very frustrated now, but when Aries is on point and he's not playing around, I mean, there's none better. He hit that pendulum el elbow, that was tremendous how quick he done it, had among, done it. Among the most physical competitors I think we've ever seen in the X Division. Oh man, talk about physical. Brian Kendrick stopping Aries in his tracks. Snaps off a tornado oh, DDT. Double stack of the legs, and oh, we almost had a new champ. Oh, man. Expression on the face of Kendrick seems to almost tell us what else do I have to do. Thought he had the win. Looks like he might be going for sliced bread. No such luck, and quickly cut off there by well, the champ, and oh, sends him out to the floor. Whoa, 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 Here wait, he goes. Wait, wait, wait. Wow. Oh, my God. Flying suicide dive. How about the impact of that move? Big time respect shown by our 
large live audience right here. Let's take a look right here, Mike. Look at the quickness and impact here. Yeah, I'll tell you what, ain't nothing fancy about that, my man. Champ turns this match in his favor oh. with the suicide dive. Oh, oh, Running man. full speed ahead, drop kick in the corner. It's a hell of a match we got here for the X Division title. I think we're about to watch the champ retain his title, Mike. Kendrick up. What a knees. Brain buster attempt. Blocked to the knees to the top of the head. And Kendrick oh. stacks him up. No, just two again. Oh. Ooh. Super oh. kick. Oh. Full extension of the leg. Gonna go for sliced bread. He's got it. No, oh. he doesn't have it. Countered by Aries. Rake of the back. Fingernails across. What the hell is Aries gonna do right now to Kendrick? Just about anything he wants. Don't waste time up there, Austin. Yeah, he's playing to the crowd and gets caught with well, a couple of elbows. Mike, Mike, he's going for... What? He's got a position for sliced bread. Get the hell out of here. Off the top. Kendrick hits the sliced bread. Gonna roll there. He's over. Here we go. Here's one. Here's two. Oh. Ah. I was gonna say new champion. I... You felt it at that point, didn't you? Yes, sir. Excellent ring presence right there by Aries. He's hanging on to those ropes to stop this momentum, this onslaught by Kendrick. Kendrick gonna go for slice oh. on the apron, but Aries cuts him off, tosses the challenger out to the arena floor. Can Aries capitalize? It was an excellent counter. Kendrick. Yeah, that definitely was a 45, maybe 50 yarder. In field goal terms, not punting. Oh! Corner drop kick. Gonna elevate. Could be the brain buster. Oh, exactly what god. it is. Oh my god. Spiked. Drop on his head. Aries covers and retains the X Division title. Your winner. Tremendous match by both men. Outstanding physical contest for the X Division title. Couldn't think of a better way, Mike, to kick off this pay-per-view than a match like that. I tip my cap to both men. Congratulations to Aries retaining his title in an extremely tough test. Great match. Couldn't agree. Props to both champion and challenger. And Taz, what do you say we go back and review our opening match tonight at Bound for Glory? Well, where do you start with the highlights? It was wow. just a who's who, a, a watch what, a move after move by both athletes, both tremendous exhibition stars, and just, uh, I mean, there were several times where Kendrick almost got the win. But that was it right there, that nasty brain buster by Austin Aries retains that X Division title. Great way to kick off our biggest pay-per-view of 2011. Austin Aries still the champ as we send it to JB. Is it cute? Oh my god, oh my god. go near my kids again so help me god and i thought i told you to put those things away we don't need to confuse cody anymore he's already confused enough now i have a little surprise for you i brought something special to wear this evening for the biggest pay-per-view of the year oh, wait a minute. are you kidding me? that's right little referee outfit are you kidding am i kidding 
Did you think I was going to let those four prostitutes run around that ring unsupervised? Prostitutes, let the That's girls right, have Tracy. a chance. That's right, Special guest referee. The girls are going to have a great match. Let them Karen have a normal Jared. ref. A, no a normal ref? Yes. I am the best ref <laughs> for this match tonight. And Tracy Brooks, you so much as go near that ring, you, you will stay in this room. You do not step foot outside of this room. Look at me unless I'm in harm's way. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? You don't step foot out of this room. I understand you, queen. Good. JB, come with me while I get glamorous. Mm. Glamorous, I good luck with that, you stupid. Jerry Lynn versus Rob Van Dam. Over 10 years ago in Philadelphia, it was the feud that launched Jerry Lynn's career. It's always been you, Rob. Now, for years now, after all the great matches we've had, it's always been RVD. You're the one the phone rings for. You're the one the companies call and give contracts to. You're the one they see as the superstar. When I'm only the one they call up to put in the ring with you because they know it's going to be a great match. But I'm good enough to do that, but I'm not good enough to give a contract to. Finally, Hogan and Eric smartened me up. They said, Jerry, why are you always an RVD show? You're just as good as he is. You know what I told them? What'd you tell them? I said, no, Eric, you're wrong. I'm better than RVD. I'm better than you, Rob. And yes, I screwed you. Oh, 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 oh. Think you're better than me, Jerry? <laughs> For more than a decade, Rob Van Dam and Jerry Lynn have had one of the most storied rivalries in professional wrestling. Now, they will take it to the extreme as they face off in full metal mayhem. I haven't previously had a match called a full metal mayhem match, but from what I understand, this is right up my alley. I'm not just gonna beat you, Rob. I'm gonna bash your brains in. I'm gonna beat him right the hell with you. <laughs> he can go very far right here in Impact Wrestling. He can beat a lot of guys, but as I'm gonna prove, it's not gonna be Rob Van Dam. Then faces the whole effing show Rob Van Dam in full metal mayhem. The following contest scheduled for one fall is a full metal mayhem match. Introducing first from Minneapolis, Minnesota, it's Jerry Lynn. Full metal mayhem. Tonight at Bound for Glory, that means chairs, ladders, tables, all legal and evident from the pre-match comments of Jerry Lynn that it was pure jealousy on his part that caused him to do what he did to RVD, eliminating Van Dam from the Bound for Glory series. Definitely was jealousy. I know Jerry a very long time. I, I never saw that in Jerry, but I'll tell you what, I like the fire he's been showing lately. And from Battle Creek, Michigan, it's Rob Van Dam! like RBD, Taz and I, well, we're enjoying this response from the crowd here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to Rob Van Dam's entrance. Well, for most wrestling purists out there, I mean, they realize the rich history and legacy that Van Dam has in the city of Philadelphia in all business of pro wrestling, so much love and respect shown for the whole effing show. RVD. And the great video package prior to this match detailed that long-term rivalry between these two competitors. Don't think there's any better way to settle it between Jerry Lynn and Rob Van Dam than full metal mayhem. Well, if there's anyone that knows Rob Van Dam, 
it's Jerry Lynn because of the, uh, the, the, the history between these two men, as we've all been talking about for weeks, and uh, the, uh, the rivalry that they've had. It was always like, well, it, was a, it was more of a friendly rivalry back in the day. You know, it's kind of not really friendly, but there wasn't that much hatred involved. Because no one really out, it was more of a competitive thing, I should say. But now, as of late, nice, fall of that armbar goes and down. Per perfect counter by Lynn, though, able to roll up and clasp the hands together. So let's face it, you know, Jerry Lynn has of late been costing Van Dam matches and costing him you know, a lot of success and costing him money, let's face it, so. Great move, the leg strength that, Taz, you have documented on many occasions when it comes to RVD. As he rolled oh. Lynn up, and Lynn, there's nothing like that. That no. leg power and strength that RVD has. Can't explain the power in the lower body of Van Dam. His glutes, hamstrings, his calves, his quads. He's got a great first step explosion. Then add in the flexibility. Yep. Oh. Yeah, I about knocked my teeth out one night and uh, right here in Philadelphia, and I guess it was the flexibility that did it. <laughs> More like his foot or, or, his, or his wrestling boots, yeah, one or the exactly. other. Yeah. What you mentioned right at the outset of this match comes into play here in the first minute. The way that these guys know each other so well, both Lynn and Van Dam know the offensive moves, defensive moves of their opponent. And there you see the counter as it was a tornado DDT attempt. By oh, Lynn, that was stopped, nice. and that one's blocked with a quick snap mare, and then the drop down by Van Dam, but Lynn's one step ahead. Yeah, it looked like Rob was gonna try and go to a Northern Lights suplex, but had second thoughts, and Jerry, the pure veteran that he is, he was able to counter it. Oh, you're right, it was always one of those rivalries that was fueled by mutual respect yes. between the two, and it's really broken down in the past couple of months. Sure has, I mean, and uh, neither of these men have lost a step, they're both, wow. as you can see, oh, wow. Well, Looked like Jerry had something in mind. Well, if he was trying to dive into him and drop Rob over that top rope and he knocked Rob loopy, loopy. Even though Rob didn't go over the top, and he definitely drilled Van Dam. Oh, I'm talking about getting drilled. <laughs> Take advantage of the ring apron. No give outside the squared circle. But again, Mike, the explosiveness that I talked about with his legs, with Van Dam's legs, he went from standing still at quick as he did it, to just popping right up and dropping those legs on the apron onto the throat of Jerry Lynn. Very hard to do that physically. I mean, people don't even realize that. Unless you've ever really been in, a, you know, in the ring with someone to the level of a Rob Van Dam. RVD, one of those guys that can switch gears as the battle, yes, goes out to the arena floor, but this is full metal mayhem. You can use those Steel guardrails. Well, it's, it's right up the alley, definitely up. Oh my God, oh. nobody there. Nasty landing from Rob. Like he's grabbing his uh, shin or his knee. Well, zero reward with the high risk attempt. Here we go, here we go. That's not your basic six foot Home Depot Hardly. ladder either. That's a big ass ladder right there. And Van Dam able to get back up to his feet. Yeah, Rob. But you can see yeah. as he rolled Jerry Lynn into the ring that he dropped down and still favoring the leg and the knee. Well, if, uh, you know, if I'm Jerry Lynn, and I know, like I said earlier, I know Jerry pretty good, and Jerry went around a block a few times and went around another time, he might look at that leg as a, as a target. If I'm Jerry, that's what I would be thinking. But Rob is... Oh! Sliding drop kick by Lynn and the, the ladder that he brought into play initially was used as a weapon right into the head and face of Van Dam as RVD was going under the ring to introduce a chair. Yeah, definitely uh, excellent timing by Jerry to just light up Rob Van Dam with that chair. I, I guess he caught him in the face with it. We really couldn't tell from our angle, but... Uh, Chair brought into the ring by Lynn, who tries to send Van Dam to the corner, but quickly reversed off the float over. RVD springs off the middle rope, cross oh body, God. and Lynn's back goes right into the chair. Again, full metal mayhem. It's all good. Quick pin. You can use ladders, chairs, anything metal, and that's full, I guess. 
And it's mayhem. And it commits mayhem, correct. Yeah. <laughs> That's the equation. Oh, fumble. That's all right. Rob will make up for it. Trust me. Maybe not. Senses uh -oh. that Lynn has been weakened on, from all the weight that, that crashed Jer down Jer onto Jerry when he caught his back He's on the chair. Got to get out of that corner. I'm telling you, I know what Rob's going to do here. Seen this before, yeah. huh? Oh, my God. Corner drop kick with the steel chair. I'm telling you, the man, he's done that to me. It, it feels like a stick of dynamite just goes off in your face. Boom! Right in your face. And after a few, it's just horrible. Just knocks you loopy and silly. And what the hell's Van Dam doing now? Got that ladder perched up. <laughs> Clear the infield. Ready for a little roll? Maybe a little thunder. Bam. Oh! God, Rob had to feel that himself. A little kamikaze action right there by Rob Van Dam, but yeah, put, Jerry putting Lynn. your own body on the line. Correct. Pin attempt on Lynn by RVD. Nets him just a two count. Yeah, these type of matches, man, they pick apart your body. You, you don't have a lot of these matches that you can do. That's why you don't see them as often as a regular match or, you know, cage match. Not that they're easy. Full Metal Mayhem really, really takes you apart. Oh! Drop kick into the chair. Oh, here we go. Lynn. Here we go. Well, you can see Jerry Lynn, you know, listen, this is his time and his mind. He's got this thing that he says, Feels like Van Dam has just gotten everything in there. He, Jerry Lynn, has been like his stepping stone. And he's always just been like his, uh, you know, hey, grab my shine box, Jerry, that type guy. You know what I mean? That's pretty much been the story of the rivalry over a decade between these two. Oh, bad landing for Van Dam. I'm kidding. And Spe tell you, especially the way that his legs were split at that point. But then right on his tailbone and coccyx area. And then look, watch out! Speaking of coccyx. Tell you what, that that I mean, Jerry Lynn, that was just looks <laughs> like it hurt like hell, man. Bad landing. Uh oh. Oh! Brutal, wow. brutal shot to the head and face with the chair. And Watch then the ladder. Oh my God! It was a bridging suplex. And that German suplex, I got real nervous. I thought Van Dam back of his head. Was gonna hit the leg of that steel ladder. That would have been that would have been bad. RVD on hands and knees trying to call, crawl away from this offensive assault by Lynn. Jerry has other ideas. Chair in place. Attempted a suplex is blocked by Van Dam, oh. and RVD oh. uses the ladder as a weapon. Zero give in that steel ladder. You can hear the explosive sound of Jerry Lynn's body. Oh my! Springing off the middle rope. RVD, here he goes. Pin attempt on Lynn. Not able to put him away. Amazing resilience here by Jerry Lynn in spite of all the, the damage that RVD has dealt out to him. Definitely physical. Just as physical as we thought this would be. I think Jerry Lynn just realized now that there's a steel ladder put behind him that Rob put there. He didn't see it at first. And look how quick Jerry Lynn was there. Oh! And then Lynn comes flying off the ropes and decks Van Dam. You can sense that Lynn going to roll out. Maybe for recovery purposes. He's hurt. I don't know, Mike. I think Jerry's just hurt. But maybe to look for yet another weapon. How many ladders you need? Uh oh. Yeah, see the people in the front row. Probably a good oh, well, move. They know. Let's get yourself Clear out of the, the way. the ringside area. Oh. It's full metal mayhem at Bound for Glory. Sweep of Van Dam's leg drops him on the apron. 
That ladder. I believe it's it kind of set up like a ramp. Uh oh. Oh my God! Be careful here. This surveys the situation. Does RVD? Oh no, Rob. This is bad here. But it's legal. It's full metal. I know, but it's nasty. Don't. Oh my. The shoulder block from the inside out. Oh my God! Sunset. Oh, the power bomb. I'll just watch it. You don't need us to say anything. Sick. Physicality, it's been the tone of the match from the very outset between these two, as you would expect in full metal mayhem. Lynn rolls Van Dam over. She was still not able to get the three. But Jerry. Jerry Lynn, just the veteran that he is, such the veteran, the little subtle things, he rolls Rob away from that rope to prevent him from putting his foot on the rope to break the count. Saw that close-up look of Jerry Lynn, and it's tough to see because of the blonde hair that drops into his face. Before you should see the shiner underneath the yep. eye, and it's, that mouse is really starting. Oh! Now you got it. There, there's going to be uh, another one. Yeah, now you got a, not a mouse. Matching. Right? Now you got a rat on your eye instead of a mouse. And that's never good. RVD gonna try and put him away and still can't do it. Tell you what, a lot of intestinal fortitude, toughness shown by Jerry Lynn, able to kick out. He about got pasted with that chair kick by uh, Van Dam. I gotta tell you, watching this and being here where we are, it's like I'm going back in time. What the hell's going on? <laughs> Well, Taz is in the time warp. <laughs> and you know what? You may see something that you've seen before also right here. Oh, my God. Let's lay out and let it happen. I mean, that, that's, that, that would be coast to coast. Sentiments exactly. Holy Good. gosh. Well, it wasn't Cal. Wow. It wasn't Cal that they were chanting. That's Couldn't put be it in. better, however. Jerry Lynn looks like he got hit by a truck. Van Dam's gonna be feeling this match even though he was victorious. Both these guys are gonna be hurting later, not tomorrow, later and tomorrow. That was just nasty metal, full metal mayhem to its highest level. Rivalry over a decade in the making as we go back and review the incredible physicality of this full metal mayhem. Yeah, I mean, just Van Dam got rolled the thunder on that ladder, and Jerry Lynn went for a leg drop. Nobody there, but you can just see. Whenever you get the you know, ladders involved and chairs and steel guardrails and whatnot, the human body's not meant for this one. Powerball! I mean, just it's about kicking Jerry's head off there, and, and there right there, that Van Terminator. I believe, I believe that's what Rob will get mad if I call him wrong, I'm telling you. But I think that was it. Coast to coast for sure. Victorious was Van Dam. What a match by both these guys. And respect is still there. That's cool to see. That's the mutual respect that this rivalry was founded on. Great stuff. And it returns tonight at Bound for Glory as RVD is victorious with the win over Jerry Lynn. And ladies and gentlemen, this video footage from earlier today, Dixie Carter arrives at the arena knowing if Sting is able to defeat Hogan, she regains power and control.
No other superstar made a bigger impact in 2011 than Crimson. I came into Impact Wrestling to prove a point, to prove that I belonged, to prove that I'm a top contender, to prove that I will one day be a world champion. The undefeated rookie rolled through the competition and seemed destined to win the Bound for Glory series and a shot at the TNA World Heavyweight Gold until an injury took him out of the tournament. I got injured on my own accord trying to win a match in a Bound for Glory series tournament. That's one way to get hurt, okay? And I, it sucks, but I can live with that because I was trying to put food on my table while I got hurt. Joe coming out of the woodworks and all of a sudden has no shot in hell of winning the tournament. He's going out on purpose and injuring these people, the front runners, the guys that might be, you know, pose a threat to winning the tournament. That's another case of sour grapes and, you know, and being a little six-year-old schoolyard bitch. You know, it's unusual. You know, I get a little violent. I start breaking some rules. I do things that maybe the company doesn't like. And all of a sudden, I find myself in the inevitable three-way. A three-way where two men are pitted against me for my transgressions. It's no different, boys. It's no different, Morgan. It's no different, Crimson. They've tried it before. They will try it again. And I guarantee you, I've been in this spot before. I've had everything stacked against me. And gentlemen, you will find out it will not matter. Now, these three forces will collide in a three-way war on TNA's biggest stage, Bound for Glory. Whoever comes out on top is sure to become a top contender in the hunt for the TNA World Heavyweight title. Will I be 100% for Bound for Glory? You're damn right I'll be 100% for Bound for Glory. I didn't want to just come back and half-ass it and be half of the blueprint. I'm going to be 100% the blueprint and 100% go back to get my world title shot to 100% become a world champion. I don't like anybody. I don't pretend to be your friend. I don't pretend to be your hero. I don't pretend to be your great savior. I've always done one thing. It's beat people up. And rest assured, come bound for glory, the beatings will continue. I set my mind to something. I, I want to go out there and I want to do it. You know, I'm not a quitter. I never accept defeat. I mean, I'm not going to... I'm not gonna lay lay over, I'm not gonna roll over, I'm not gonna die. You know, I, I I've done a lot of things in life, you know, for 26 years old. I've been at Iraq twice. I spent two years, over two years of my life over there. You know, getting shot at, getting blown up, kicking doors in. You know what I mean? That's a lot to see for a teenager. I will prove at Bound for Glory that I am a main event contender. I will walk out of Bound for Glory the winner. Whether I beat Matt Morgan. Joe, both at the same time, I don't care. I'll go through them both, and I will prove I belong to the main event. Samoa Joe, Crimson, and Mac Morgan prepare for war in a triple threat match. The following contest scheduled for one fall is a triple threat match. Introducing first from the Isle of Samoa, the Samoa Submission Machine, Samoa Joe! Tonight at Bound for Glory, presented by Direct Auto Insurance, we see the entrance of the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe. It's first pin, first submission in this three-way match. But we've seen a bond on Impact Wrestling between Matt Morgan and Crimson, and that may have a case here where Samoa Joe is going to be facing two opponents, Taz. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And it's not just two basic opponents, that's two large, hungry, young athletes that are gunning for Samoa Joe. So, and this is a three-way match, but it might be uh, tough threatening for the Samoa submission machine. And his opponent from Fairfield, Connecticut, the blueprint, Matt Morgan. You can sense the heat between the blueprint Matt Morgan and Samoa Joe when Matt was our Bound for Glory series analyst at the broadcast table. He was really the first one to jump on it. He hated how Samoa Joe was taking out all the top contenders, injuring all the top guns in that Bound for Glory series. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I, listen, I respect Matt. I'm a fan of Matt, uh, his work, but I, I gotta tell you, I just don't know why he would uh, kind of get his nose in other people's business like that. I don't get it. And from the Brownsville section of Brooklyn, New York, the undefeated Crimson! I've been here before, I'm not a stranger to the danger, you know it's right where I belong! As the unbeaten Crimson makes his way to the ring to complete this three-way match, let me tell you,
tell you why Matt Morgan was so upset at Samoa Joe's conduct during the Mount of Glory series. It's because Matt Morgan loved the idea that wins and losses mattered. He thought that that Mount of Glory series was ideal. It was his opportunity to gain a world heavyweight title shot. Injury took him out of it. And this man, Crimson, unbeaten. He was at the top of the Bound for Glory Series leaderboard when Samoa Joe struck. Yeah, I knew all that. So, did that answer your question? I knew the answer. I just, give me my opinion. I don't, you know, I, I don't stick my nose in people's business. That's just me. But anyway, triple threat right here. Look at Joe. He's like, yeah, you two guys fight each other. I'll just watch. I like Joe's strategy. Well, maybe not. <laughs> it worked. Oh, is that a coincidence that both Morgan and uh, Crimson are wearing the uh, same color trunks? This, we, we, this is we, a triple threat match, it right? It is. It is every man for himself. It is first pin, first submission to win this. Patented move by the blueprint. Repeat elbows in the corner, and now Crimson, he senses the advantage. And, whoa. Well, I don't know if Crimson meant to do that. I think he was rearing back to punch. Joe, and he got nailed by Mo uh, Morgan. got nailed, I should say. By that elbow off Crimson. Oh, Joe, look at these shots by Joe. Yeah, quick, oh. short, rapid fire rights, one after the other. Nice jabs, man. And you can see that Joe's trying to light the fire under, under Morgan, saying that it was Crimson who hit him and caught him. Trying to get into the head of the blueprint. And now Crimson and Morgan just pinballing. Samoa Joe back and forth. Continue with the double team as Joe shot off into the ropes. Whoa! You can see the, intent, the intentions in the eye of Crimson. Whoa, whoa, nobody there. A smart move by Joe to drop down as Crimson goes out to the floor. Ooh. And then he sweeps the leg, using his entire body to take down Morgan. Well, that's smart to chop down that giant redwood that Matt Morgan is. The big seven-footer, 300 pounds, favoring the knee. And Joe now senses that he can go in for the kill. Crimson's been taken out, out of the arena floor. Now he can concentrate on Morgan, who gets back up to his feet, and then is able to elevate the 300-pounder, dropping with the side slam. Crimson quickly slides in and tries to steal the pin and the win. Can't play Crimson. First one of submission, a pin of submission. Matt Morgan does the dirty work, you get the pin, so what? Morgan looks like he's upset about it. He's too busy arguing with uh, the other giant. And next thing you know, uh, Samoa Joe capitalizes. You can't turn your back for one second in a triple threat match. Wow. Look at that. Look at Joe's strength. Taking Crimson, just tossing him with ease over the top right onto Morgan. Samoa Joe, the only man in the ring. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Elbow suicide to the flying suicide dive. But at the same time, he takes the forearm, he takes the elbow, and he drives it right into the head and the face of Crimson. Very impressive by the man the size of Samoa Joe. Let's take another look. Check this out here, wait. This is how Joe kind of dropped both Morgan and Crimson. Here comes Joe, and you're right, there's that flying forearm right in the mush. Uh-oh, look at Morgan, look at Morgan. What the hell's he doing up there? Oh, it goes cross body, almost as if Joe had eyes in the back of his head as he slides out of the way. And Morgan's big cross body blocked the temp off the top, hits Crimson, gotta take another look at this. Let's take a look at a seven footer just about off the top. That's ridiculous. Such a large man onto another large man. It's the athletic background of Matt Morgan to be able to go up to the top. That incredible balance that he had up there and then comes flying off and caught Crimson. And now, well, chance here for Joe. Both Morgan and Crimson down. He rolls Crimson in. Gonna try and beat the undefeated one. Joe right there shows some tenacity. I don't know. I'm thinking that maybe, uh, Crimson might be in a good position to hook some sort of a submission on him while Morgan's... Oh, wow, how's that for disrespecting the guy? Just kind of kick him lightly in his face a little bit and say, hey, here's a boot in your mush. You don't want to...
to fire up this crimson up. This guy is the real deal. So don't, don't talk him too much. Fights back from the ropes. The strikes of Crimson, followed by the knees, and then the cravat, which enables that head to be wide open. Again, for the big knee shots. Oh, boy, overhead with that suplex. Morgan going to try and slide it and steal it. Got some blood on the nose of Crimson. And the bond that we witnessed on Impact Wrestling recently between Crimson and Morgan may be dissolving right before our very eyes. Well, it's almost, it has to here because of what's at stake in this triple threat. They go back to the double team, but now Morgan pulls Crimson off the pin and Crimson does the same to the blueprint. Well, you know it's a matter of time before this thing explodes between these two. And if you're Samoa Joe, you have to love this. Oh, yeah, sure. He not only watches the bond wow. between these two implode, but at the same time, Joe's out on the floor, regaining his win. Wow, what an exchange. Yeah, big overhand rights between the two big men. And two big boys, man, going punch for punch. Joe from outside, able to hook the leg of Morgan, oh. the blueprint goes into the guardrail. Not exactly sure as we come back here for the shot, what would he caught Crimson? I, don't, I have no idea, but I know Joe right now, he is fired up. And Crimson not looking too good here. Open hand slaps the rights and the left, and then Joe into the corner. Boom! Flush with the kick. Ah, oh, man, look at this, Joe. Could be muscle buster yeah, he's time. Yeah, def definitely sticking muscle buster. Set up in the corner. Hooks the legs of Crimson. Morgan oh. able to come Ooh. in with a big boot to the midsection of Joe, just when he was going to try and drop Crimson with the muscle buster. Could be carbon footprint time. Morgan warming it up. No, instead running knee. And then oh. the spear by Crimson right into the pin. For the three count, and Crimson stays unbeaten with the win. Gotta say, interesting uh, turn of events. The athlete with the least experience got the victory. But as you said, stays undefeated. Almost right place, right time for the unbeaten Crimson to get the win on Samoa Joe in the triple threat match. You're right, Mike, and that's a big part of being successful in this game is having great timing and being in the right place at the right time. But here's some highlights from this very intense triple threat matchup. That big Matt Morgan man coming off that was impressive. And that's the kick that kind of got momentum going for Joe. But Matt Morgan. That helped. I mean, that inadvertently helped Crimson nail that spear. Was Morgan going for that carpet footprint? But it looked like he caught him with his knee. You see what yeah, I did? I thought he was setting up for the carbon footprint, but not well, the case. It was the running knee in the corner. It's not the most popular choice maybe in this building that this man was victorious. Different type of crowd here. Small Joe seemed like he had the home field advantage. He's more of uh, the style that he used to hear. Don't forget it, Crips is the real deal, man. Very impressive. Undefeated by this young athlete. As Taz points out, unbeaten streak for Crimson continues. Being here in Philadelphia, the biggest pay-per-view event of the year, bound for glory and fans literally coming in from all over the world to see this one event. Joining us live across the globe on pay-per-view, as well. Oh, yeah. I don't need no introduction. You all know who I am. 
but for those of you who've been living with your head up your ass for the past 15 years, I'll tell you who I am. I'm the biggest, I'm the baddest, the roughest, the toughest, the meanest pro wrestler walking in this business today. I'm Bully Ray. Anderson, you think you got me right where you want me because you challenged me to a Falls Count Anywhere match in Philadelphia? You got to be kidding me. Let me let you in on a little secret, something that I've never admitted before. I've been exploiting this city for 15 years, raping its fans, milking them for every single dime they're worth. I got seven cars, I got five houses, and because, it's a, because of the white trash in this city who I've been abusing and taking advantage of. Anderson, I'm gonna take care of you tonight in a match you got no business being in. Screw you, and screw Philadelphia. I'm Bully Ray. I'm from New York City. makes his way towards the arena for a very special showdown against Mr. Anderson. You know, it was Anderson who initially issued the challenge, caught us all off guard when he threw out that, that challenge to Bully Ray, said, let's make it falls count anywhere in Philadelphia. Yeah, I still don't understand what Anderson's thinking, but I respect his heart and his toughness to do something like that. The following contest scheduled for one fall is a Philadelphia Falls Count Anywhere match. Introducing first from Hell's Kitchen, New York, Bully Ray! He's feeling it. And he's hurt. How about this? Some of the size of Bully Ray up on the shoulders of Anderson, and he turns oh. around and gets leveled with a violent boot to the face. Yeah, that was impressive. That shows the quickness and the athleticism of someone the size of Bully Ray. He's got a little bit of a mean streak, too, if you haven't realized. Really? <laughs> I'll tell you, Anderson might be out on his feet. Uh-oh. Well, you've told us what this feels like in the past, Taz. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, uh, you know, that's how much it hurts. It just, it, you know, it, it, it could definitely, uh, you know, numb you, <laughs> your whole upper body. 
nasty. Uh, Bully Ray possesses a very nasty chop. Oh, I told you. Got full control right here. Bully Ray can do whatever he wants right now. Oh my God, not another one. God. That'll bust every blood vessel in your pack. And wear you down. Oh, wow, right across the head, nice. Second time, caught Bully Ray with the kick. Anderson on top for the pin for two. The whole side of the boot of Mr. Anderson just cracked Bully Ray right across his temple and cheek area. That whole side of your face area there. Anderson out among the fans at, at ringside. Got a sign. Something about Philly asshole, right? Now watch your mouth. Yeah, it says, welcome to Philly, asshole. All right. I've actually heard that many times. <laughs> Just this weekend alone. Ow! Oh, oh, wait a minute. What the hell was that? <laughs> that wasn't your basic oak tag paper, I guess. Well, could be a dead end for Bully Ray. That might have stung a little bit and might leave a little mark. I'm thinking. Wow. It's like a gun went off. Whew. A dazed Bully Ray rolls out to the arena floor, going to try and stop this momentum that is turned in favor of Mr. Anderson. Rivalry between these two all started when Anderson became a member of Immortal. Oh. It's a waste of a nice cold beer. Horrible. The fan interaction may have been yesterday here in oh, Philadelphia, but there's fan interaction tonight here in the arena in Philadelphia as well. Anderson using a steel chair around the ringside area for Bully Ray, who reverses and then shoulder first into the unforgiving steel steps. Go for a cover here. Here you go. Go for a cover. One, two, and that Bully Ray is about to introduce. Well, anyone who's followed Bully Ray's career, they realize he's pretty well versed when it comes to utilizing a table during a match. <laughs> to say the least. A anybody better through the years? Uh, no. Not many. <laughs> Fight between the two. Heads up the ramp. Anderson, the series of rights, has got Bully Ray rocking it. Has Bully Ray on the defensive, got him backed up up on the ramp. They're right up here on the stage now. No give up there on the stage at all. Anderson to try and take him over, but blocked by Bully Ray. Another attempt blocked by the bully. A short jab to the gut. Oh, God, Mike, you feel it right feel here. It. The whole broadcast table. Shook just right feel away, just shook. He's got down him. and counts got two. Him. Look at the head that he's wearing like some kind of a glove. Like, I guess, because when he smacks on the cement or whatever, it don't hurt his hand. I think he stole that thing from, like, Iron Mike Sharp or something. New Yorkers. Ooh. Bully Ray mocking Ooh. the mic drop of Mr. Anderson. This ain't New York City. Welcome to Philly, bitch. Anderson on top. Here's two. Got a hole. Oh, what a side of 
Bully Ray's head. I think he's split open or something. Or he's, it's all welted up there. Yeah, top of the head. You can see the blood starting to stream down. The they well, they're right behind our broadcast table here. Going to try and get our Bound for Glory cameras in position to follow this action. Again, this is false count anywhere, so this is all legal. This thing could end up any place. Backstage area. Bully Ray taking Anderson. Oh. What the hell is that? God. What was that? Kind of a, some kind of a pipe that he tried to hit Anderson with. Watch out for oh, the no, concrete. No, 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 concrete no, 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 no. Concrete floor. Oh. No. Pile driver put Anderson head first on the on the concrete. He's down. Is he out enough for Bully Ray to cover and get the pin? He's got him. He's got him. Oh. The side, the right side of Bully Ray's face and head. I don't know if it's blood or what's going on with it. It's just red. Chair across the throat, across the windpipe of Anderson. Oh my God. Looks like they're making their way right back out here. And right to my right, to our right, I should say, Mike. Brutality and physicality of Bully Ray and Mr. Anderson continues oh. as they battle now in the crowd here in Philadelphia. It's like they're right in front of our Spanish broadcast announced position. That is the area, correct, Michael? Ooh. Right over in the neighborhood of, yes, Hector Guerrero, Willie Urbina, our Spanish broadcast team. Looked like a low blow that time by Anderson on Bully Ray. Fight between the two, gonna spill back over the guardrail, more towards the ring area. Come on, get him, Anderson. Oh, man, what a haymaker there, huh? Big shot by Anderson, side of the head of Bully Ray. I want to try a different guard rail. Oh, there you go. Separating. The steel rail is Anderson. Going to bring that in and use it as a weapon. Over the top, man. Put it over the top of the... Go on, the... The amount of energy exerted by Anderson just bringing this guardrail That's into this match. Oh. And it may come back to haunt him. Yeah, well, it's very dangerous to have that amount of metal and steel just laying in that ring like that. What else do you know? Bully Ray now looks he's getting another table. That other table that's set up. Bully Ray was able to set that up. That's just sitting there. You can just sense something's gonna happen. You can just feel it, you know what I mean? You can see something's gonna go down. And it doesn't look like it's gonna be good for Mr. Anderson, does it? Yeah, I agree. Just go through whoa, 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 whoa. Keep your eyes on Anderson. Oh, my God. Watch the... Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, the neck, the spine area. Oh, my God. Anderson landed hard. A Full bubble Nelson. bomb. Full Nelson in the bubble bomb through the table. Drop down. Arm extended over. on fumes able to fire the arm up before three extremely impressive heart shown by anderson 
I thought he was toast. That bent up steel guardrail brought fully into the ring by the bully. And with Anderson almost out at this point, can Bully Ray finish him off? I think it looks like Bully Ray is definitely in a position to end Anderson right here. Oh my God, this is bad. Bully going high risk. Oh! Backsplash right into the guardrail as Anderson slides and rolls right out of the way. Bit of a light check here. First into the steel. He's done. Oh, not yet. <laughs> Mike check face first into steel guardrail. Not enough. Look at the face, that nose and mouth probably all busted up of Anderson. Anderson in pursuit, circles the ring. Gonna look underneath for more weapons. Oh, God. Anderson just wrapped that steel trash can right around the skull of Bully Ray. Bully Ray's out. Out, man. I'm telling you, he's out. Anderson from the apron. Now heads inside the ring. Now he's back out of the ring. And yeah, there's a reason. Yep. Yeah. It's because, my God, he's going to go up to the top here. talking about this for a long time. This is the night. You ready? I'm ready. You sure? I'm sure. It's a big night, but I'm ready. All right. Look, son, I know you've been there for us. You've been in the right place at the right time, made the right calls, and been able to do it in a way that no one has figured this thing out. And I appreciate it. We all appreciate it. But tonight's going to be a little bit different. Tonight, two things have to happen. Number one, obviously, 
Hulk's going to win. Okay? That's obvious. Number two, and I even, even really talked to Hulk about this, but to me, we have to take Sting out permanently. I want him going out on a stretcher, and I don't ever want him coming back. It's going to get ugly, but I need you to have my back. Can you be there? I got your back, Dad. Are you sure? Because it's going to get ugly. I'm sure. I got you covered. All right. It's a big moment, man. You've grown up in this business. You've been around it all your life. Tonight's, tonight's the night. It's here. I've been waiting a long time. I love you. Love you too. All right, let's get it done. Did you, what the hell? Did he say, I, he said, I've got your back, Dad? Eric called him son. Wow. Eric Bischoff, referee Jackson James. Well, that, that explains a lot, I guess. I mean, what Bischoff said, you've been there for us? Always the right time, the right place? Wow, I, I, I Jackson hell? James is the son of Eric Bischoff? Well, kind of speechless, taking a, taking a back here a little bit, so we apologize. Yeah. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I can't uh, believe that we just heard that. I he said Hulk's got to win and Sting's got to be taken out. Let's go to the knockout's tail of the tape. It was at no surrender. Winner's victory over Mickey James enabled her to become knockout champ for a second time. The new knockout's vice president, Karen Jarrett. Yeah, not only refused the title rematch for Mickey James, then came up with the plan to determine winner's challengers tonight. And then on Impact Wrestling, Velvet Sky, Mickey James, Madison Rain, they all advance in the Queens qualifiers. Now it's the four-way knockout championship match. The following contest scheduled for one fall is for the knockout championship. Introducing first from the Big Apple, Velvet Sky. Guess we got to regroup here, Taz. Yeah, well, focus on the match at hand. I'm focused. I'm definitely focused. I love gold, and I love orange or red, whatever color it is. It's Velvet Sky, and I'm always, always an uplifting experience when Velvet's around. She gets a crowd up and uh, aroused. The hydraulics. Well, it's Sunday. We're live. It's Philadelphia. It's the biggest pay-per-view of the year. Why not? Let the pigeons fly among us. <laughs> or let them loose, one or the other. And from Seattle, Washington, it's Madison Rain. She's a killer queen. It's the queen bee. The Queen Bee wearing camo. I love it. You know what camo is, Mike? That's short for camouflage. Gotcha. Madison Rain, the win <laughs> over Tara in the Queen's qualifier to move on to this three-way knockout match. Quiz, anybody kiss up to the knockout vice president, Karen Jarrett? What do you mean? Like, what do I mean? Like Madison Rain. Well, she should. I don't think Madison's kissing up to Karen Jarrett. She's respectful really? of respect, respectful of Miss Jarrett's position. Something wrong with that? You announcing the same shows that I am? Perhaps I'm carrying you on the same shows that you're on. But why digress? <laughs> That's why you're slumped over. <laughs> Richmond, Virginia, it's Mickey James! Mickey thought that she was going to be in line for the return title match. Coming off the loss at No Surrender, Karen Jarrett said no. You've got to earn your way into the match at Bound for Glory. That's exactly what she did. She pinned Brooke Tetzbacher and moves on to gain one of the challenger slots tonight.
Yeah, and if, it, if there's any one of these knockouts that are used to being a champion, it's definitely Mickey James. No stranger to holding gold. Accompanied by Angelina Love, it's the knockout champion, Winter! Winter, she's kind of has this. Talk about pigeons. She might have a pigeon coat on. Oh, no, I'm just saying, I hope she'll do like a pigeon coat. I don't know. It's kind of hot. Weird and hot at the same time. You want to jump in, Mike? Bizarre yeah. relationship oh. between Winter and Angelina Love. Taz becomes one of the fashion police tonight. Here at Bound for Glory. Champion? Well. You look at three challengers for the title and you figure, well, it's a tough position for the champ to retain. But then you factor in Angelina Love. She's not afraid to interfere. And how about the special official, the special referee for this match? Well, I think it's a great choice. We're about to see our special referee. And our guest referee for the evening, the VP of the Knockout Division. Wow, look at how lovely Karen Jarrett looks in that referee outfit. She looks phenomenal. I, I've never had a ref look that good in my match. Never. never. Oh, look at that. She's, she's got the company logo on there. She's... What did I tell you? Oh, uh, no, that's not. It's a match that she's given uh, the she, vice president. She, did that, she did that a few weeks ago on Impact Wrestling, and she's doing it again tonight. Crowning uh, Karen Jarrett with the tiara, the knockout vice president. Who named herself oh, special? What, what, what do you mean? Come on! Oh, you, never, you, you never gave the teacher an apple. Go on, give me a break. Give up your high horse, for God's sakes! It's the knockout title. Let's, well, it's upside down, but that's okay. She's not used to repping, Karen. Bring it around. Okay. What's phenomenal does Karen Jarrett, the vice president, uh, president of the knockout division? You know, she's not a fan of many of our knockouts as far as personalities, and she's trying to clean up the division, as she puts it, right? That's what she claims. What do you mean claims? That's what she wants to do. What do you mean claims? We'll see if she succeeds. Special referee Karen Jarrett tonight here at Bound for Glory. Whoa. Come on, Karen! Karen was out of position there to... She's not, again, she's a novice referee, so you really can't blame her, Karen. Well, you got every excuse in the book, don't you? And while Winter takes the arm of Mickey James and, and cranks on the arm and now rubs the face of Mickey into the mat. Good arm ball right there by Winter. Again, in this four-way match, it is first pin or first submission Whoa. that will leave Bound for Glory with the Knockouts Championship. First, the challengers to test. Winner is Mickey James, and the champ. Pretty successful so, so far up to this point in the match. It's been all winner. Sure has, and got to be careful with Mickey James. She's crafty. You know what I'm saying? She'll play, she'll play possum. Very hot possum. Whoa! Leg strength of Mickey James Evident. Able to take over the champ and then Ooh. straight oh, down. Man. Drop down, neck breaker. That, I'll tell you what, that neck breaker hit its mark. What was that? What did Madison I'm, I'm not sure what Madison Rain used like, there. Did she have like a handkerchief or something? What was something that? Something in the face of Mickey James. Like a napkin? Some kind of a napkin? What was that? Like a musty napkin? Now Karen, real unbiased, huh? As the referee here cheering on Whoa. Madison Rain and Mickey James from the mount reigning in the lights. See Karen Jarrett, she's down and no punching. She knows the rules, she understands. Boy, 
what an opportunity this is for Madison Rain to regain the knockout championship. Got the referee on her side. Well, Madison turns oh. around, Velvet Sky. A couple of shots with the knees. Here comes Velvet. Oh, but Sky. Face plant bulldog style. She's got the pin, and what's Karen doing? She tied oh, she the shoe up. You can trip, but oh, you gotta be careful. On. Tying up those Nikes. Madison, who motions over to Karen, come on over and count. Winner in to make the save. Well, you can't blame her. It's survival for winner. Because if that pinfall happens, Winter loses our championship. Karen is telling trying to Matt Madison, trapper. she's saying, not the two of you, go get them. That's what our referee wanted, I guess. And both Mickey James and Velvet Sky were, were legally tagged into the match. And if you're if, if you're Velvet Sky and, and Mickey James, I mean on the surface you may not want to fight yeah. each other here because you know you've got right. friendship. I didn't but, but with yeah. champion and the other sure. challenger out on the apron, now it's open for one of the two of you to win the championship here. If the referee will count. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, it's kind of hard, yeah. I mean, you know, you got a match for a knockout championship. There's a dual jackknife cover. Anytime. And frustration from Mickey James evident that Karen couldn't be prouder and happier with herself. Velvet Sky in that outfit, very uh, conquistador like. Don't want that gold, Mike? You agree? No, that one. One or two. Well, I'll take this one. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Nice handstand and Mickey James so smooth and quick into wow. transitions into her moves. Drop kick into the face of Velvet. Ooh, oh, and a shot for wow. Madison to take her off the apron. Velvet and Mickey James with the exchange. Velvet at this point getting the better of it. Hardcore country able to reverse. Shoots Velvet off into the ropes. Whoa, 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 look at this, look at this. Multiple revolutions. Flying hit scissor takeover by Velvet. Oh, there goes Winter, the knockout champ got, got blasted right there, right in the face by Velvet Sky. Another mid-ring exchange between Velvet and, and Mickey. Wow. Knockouts laying him in there. From outside, knockout champion winner hooking the leg of, of Velvet Sky. Continues the assault illegally. A lot of shenanigans in this match, and we don't have a normal referee in there. It's a Vice President of our knockout division, Karen Jarrett. Well, you were very supportive well, of, of the, the selection of Karen for the first few minutes of this match. You're jumping off the yeah, bandwagon. Well, it's getting a little annoying now, to be honest with you. So, you know, just my personal opinion. Look at that. Mickey now. Oh, she got a pin, but uh, Madison was able to kick out, but Karen Jarrett didn't even cover. Velvet Sky Again. laying in the rights and then ragdolling. The knockout champion winner. Oh, man. Yeah, that was nasty. Shoved out to the floor this is by smart. the champ. With this got to take some control. She's the champion. She can break down the numbers game here by taking her out to the floor. Going to concentrate the offense on Mickey James, who fights back, doubles over, winner with the boot. Rocket corner clothesline. Well, I mean, even if you get a cover and a pin here, is Karen going to count? No. <laughs> no. Not to this point, she hasn't. What was that? Wait a minute. Angelina, Angelina yeah. Love handing something. We've seen that. They look like to win her. With the, she swallowed. Karen 
Jarrett trying to pull Mickey James off a winner in the corner. Oh! The champ! Oh no! Smith's, I'm gonna presume it's that, that blood substance that she's used in the past to defeat Mickey James, and it goes right into the eyes of Karen Jarrett, the special referee, jumping DDT! Mickey covers, Mickey's got the pin, referee's down, you can count, we should we have a new champ we, right need a we need a ref! That's it's, Tracy it, Brooks. Yeah, the assistant, remember Karen said, don't come to the ring unless I'm in harm's way. Well, she's in harm's way, and that, that's why Tracy Brooks is out here. What the hell is going on here? A blinded Karen Jarrett taking out his referee. Meanwhile, Madison in velvet now. Watch the double underhook. Oh! Drops her down. DDT. Pin. Tracy counts. One, two, three. Velvet finally becomes the champ. Congratulations to Velvet Sky, look at this! Uh, I mean, I, I, a lot of stuff went on there. Woo. Referee R. Hebner out there looking at Karen Jarrett, but the big picture is, we hope Karen's okay. With the losers of championship, she's living, and there's your new knockout champ, Velvet Sky. Mission accomplished, finally, for Velvet Sky. Bound for glory for Velvet. She's finally done it. Velvet Sky, the new knockout champion. What a night it is for Fortune here at Bound for Glory. Bobby Roode challenging for the World Heavyweight Championship tonight. And two members of Fortune, Christopher Daniels and AJ Styles, going at it. And I quit match Kazarian. Your thoughts, please. Well, you know what, JB, I just saw Bobby Roode, and you know, I've never been more genuinely happy for one of my friends, one of the guys that stuck it out through thick and thin, even when guys like myself hit the road. He stayed here, and he stuck it out. And you know what, he is, I've been in the ring with him, he's kicking on every cylinder. And this is his night. I cannot tell you how psyched I am for him. But I'm torn, because at the same point, my two best friends are in a match where one of them is going to force the other one physically to say, I quit. Now, in my heart of hearts, I'm hoping they'll beat the hell out of each other, and this will be over, but the way Chris Daniels is thinking these days, I just, I don't think that's gonna happen, man. I think all I can do is hope. I'm torn. All right, it all happens tonight. The I Quit match, AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, here at Bound for Glory.
Christopher Daniels takes on the phenomenal AJ Styles in an I Quit match. The following contest scheduled for one fall is an I Quit match. Introducing first from the City of Angels, Christopher Daniels. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight at Bound for Glory, brought to you by Direct Auto Insurance, it has been a night of physical battles. And Taz, when you talk about an I quit match, one can expect that that physicality is going to continue. Yeah, listen, when you ever have a match where basically the way you win is the referee puts the mic in a guy's face and asks him while he's in pain, do you quit or not? I mean, that's how you win this match. It's not about pins or submissions. It's about basically breaking a guy down to a point that he says, I can't go anymore. And his opponent from Gainesville, Georgia, the phenomenal AJ Styles! Boy, the relationship between AJ Styles and who he has called on dozens of occasions his best friend, Christopher Daniels, has really gone south as of late. You think about it, back at Destination X, the two squared off in the main event, AJ getting the win. They had the rematch. Just one more match is what Daniels asked for. Almost as if Daniels was contemplating and considering retirement, just judging by what he said. We saw that match on Impact Wrestling. AJ slipped off the top, and ever since that point, Daniels has been there to jab and jab at AJ, pointing out that he got the victory over Styles. Yeah, see, I'm sorry, uh, Chris Daniels doing the right thing, getting out of that ring. <laughs> you know what? Pick your spots. You never know what AJ Styles, man. He's combustible. He's been a little bit of a salty mood as of late. Oh, it's with Daniels. Daniels got a high number. Whoa! And right at the opening bell, AJ was ready. Takes Daniels down, and Daniels right to the mount. Series of shots with the right. I quit rules. Taz pointed it out earlier. You get your opponent just to that point when the referee is going to bring the microphone into play. You make your opponent utter those two words. I quit. That's the Ooh. only way you win. I just, I mean... I've never been. Say it, AJ. Say it. No. Say it. Say it. No. Yeah. No. I was about to say, I, you know, I, I've never been in an I quit match, and it's just I can never think of a match that is more, oh, just mentally uh, and physically and emotionally breaking down a guy to the point to make him say uncle. I mean, it's just. It's, it's not disrespecting, it just makes you feel low and dirt. That's what I would assume. It's you know? really the ultimate. Say it, Daniels! Say it! Uh, why don't you suck? It's the ultimate why don't you suck, stipulation Daniels? in trying to prove superiority. Awesome arsenal and offense by Styles. No! No! Oh, no! Never! Is it going to be a, a submission type move that makes your opponent say, I quit? Or is it just going to be that culmination of all the offense that you can direct that will wear him down to the point that he finally says, I've had enough? the abdominal stretch, but also AJ with the shots to the side of Daniels, who fights back and hip tosses him over.
suplex attempt over is blocked by, by AJ. And then AJ takes Daniels up into the air. How about this? The blood rushing to the head of Daniels as AJ toys with him and then powers him down to the canvas. Yeah, excellent balance right there and strength by Styles. Bridging back with the reverse Never. chin lock. Is Daniels going to say I quit? Never. <sighs> Smart by Daniels to break that grip. That breaks everything down once you get rid of the grip. I'm surprised that both these men, you can sense the hatred that they're both going to try and get their opponent caught. That flying into that Juji Katami. Extension of the arm, gonna try and, and, and get the submission win for the I quit rules. He, he, he bit the fingers of AJ, right? Yep, to break the hold. Series of offense by Daniels. Shots to the back with the elbow. And a dazed and weakened AJ up to his feet and still able to leapfrog over. One of the greatest drop kicks of all time in professional wrestling. Yeah, awesome, awesome drop kick. The way AJ just his vertical leap is just insane. Oh my god. Wow. Flying flip dive. Styles connects. Well, that, that could be enough to weaken Daniels to a point that maybe can get him to say, I quit. I don't know. AJ senses that he's got Daniels weakened. Here, the impact of the forearm shots as well as Daniels being sent into the side of the ring. What's Daniels doing there? What is it? I don't know what he's trying to grab. Like a like a toolbox of some kind, isn't it? Ouch! Series of headbutts by Daniels on Styles and. AJ rolled in. Oh, whoa, 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 that's bad. Well, that can definitely get you to say I quit. Oh, my God, whoa. Daniels yeah. taking the screwdriver, trying to stab AJ with it. These guys used to be best friends, and Daniels is trying to gorge his face with a, with a screwdriver? Yeah, the relationship between these two, the best friends, as you mentioned, be naming their, their own children after each other. <laughs> and it's reached the point that they square off here in the I Quit match, and Daniels taken up. AJ gonna fight him outside. Oh. 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 Wow, man. Daniels, the big boot. Oh, my God. What the hell? Look at that. Styles and Daniels trying to regroup. What do you say, AJ? Why don't you end it now? I'll say it. No? Okay. <laughs> Action back in the ring as Daniels takes Styles and... Oh, oh man! God. Caught it with a back body drop. Say it, AJ! Say it! No! No! Say it, AJ, this will all end! No! 
You won't say it? All right, I'll make you say it. BME! Oh! Best moonsault ever! And it was to the back of AJ. AJ was in that vulnerable position. Wow. That was pinpoint accuracy by Daniels. The pain that AJ's lower back has got to be in. Daniels asks the crowd, should I go one more time I'm instead? Going a single leg crab here. Oh. <laughs> no! <laughs> AJ refuses to say, I quit. Scratching and clawing to try and get the rope break and does. That was not easy right there by AJ. It took a ton out of AJ Styles. That single leg crab by Daniels almost got AJ Styles to quit. First the elbow, then the knife edge chops by AJ. Went for the kick, but Daniels blocked and stopped. Oh. Takes him up in the backbreaker across the knee. Move. Well, our live audience here in Philadelphia kind of torn. AJ Styles, fallen angel, that's what you're hearing. with AJ down and defenseless, just laying on his back. Daniel sitting AJ, down. AJ, AJ, hey, are you listening? Are you listening? I've been dreaming about this moment for months. The moment where I'm watching you pass out, the moment I see you take your last breath, and let me tell you, everything that you were ever given in TNA is going to be mine. Mine, AJ, it should have been mine. Isn't that right, everybody? You know you love me more than him. <laughs> I'm going to rectify it, AJ, and the truth is, I never wanted you to say the words, I quit. Oh. Nope. I never wanted you to say the words, AJ. I was happy to bash your brains in, in the ring. But you know what, AJ? I promise you, I'll tell your wife that your last words were I love you. Okay? Okay? <laughs> uh, Wendy. Wendy, I want you to take the kids out of the room now because they shouldn't see their father murdered in cold blood. This is one sick SOB, isn't it? Well, that was the worst thing that Daniels could have did was went into that, that whole big diatribe and that, that, that game. AJ Styles, an opening here, you can see it. Sidesteps Daniels, who comes charging into the corner. As Daniels oh comes back God. out, big, clubbing clotheslines. Jeez. Three of them in a row. Standing spin kick. Look at the way AJ is blasting. Daniels, oh, nobody there. Elbow caught Daniels. AJ from the middle rope and a spring back. Wow. Inverted reverse DDT. Styles continues the strikes. Kick to the head. Corner clothesline. Look at AJ's eyes. Look at his face. Incredible intensity by Styles. Flying forward. Shot springing off the top rope. A 
attempt at the Styles Clash. Blocked. Boom! Man. Daniels powers him down. Gonna go BME again. The agility, amazing as he lands on his feet. And then AJ shoots him into the corner and then gets caught with the boot. Die, AJ! Big Pele right there! Daniels might be toast! Oh my god! Pele first! Styles clashes the follow move! But remember, it's not about a pinfall win. It's about making your opponent say those two words. Make them say, I quit. AJ, almost if he was asking for the encouragement wait, 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 of the this? crowd to use the chair. That's that screwdriver, AJ, don't do this. You gotta be kidding. Okay, AJ, I quit, I quit. Just don't hurt me, man. Don't hurt me. I quit. Your winner, AJ Styles! What the hell? I mean, what? just like that, I... Look at Daniels, he didn't, he didn't even want to try to fight back. He didn't want no part of that. He just straight up quit. Wow. Okay. And Daniels not only utters the two words, I quit, but then felines right away from the ring. Well, there was a load of emotion going into this match. I mean, two former best friends. Tearing each, each other limb from limb. And it just got it got real physical. Let's take a look at it right here. At this I quit match. And we laid out basically the rules were. I mean, you had to make your opponent say I quit, but showed some awesome athleticism by both men throughout this match and a lot of violence and viciousness like that right there by Daniels. Several times in the match I felt that maybe Daniels could win. Especially the time where he just stopped and just started talking and ripping on AJ verbally. And AJ stopped showing that explosiveness that only AJ can show to that strong inverted DDT. And AJ wanted to use that screwdriver that Daniels brought into this match, or attempted to, I should say. And Daniels just quit before AJ could even go near him. He ran, it, he ran out of here uh, and just said, I quit, but you just heard. What is he saying? He's saying, saying you never, you beat, never me? beat me. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, kind of just flat out said you quit before the guy even could get near with the screwdriver. Well, AJ Styles, he proves his superiority, winning the I quit match. But I don't think AJ necessarily liked the way that, that he won that match. No. And, and you know that AJ has to be furious with what just went down post-match. Well, he got attacked from behind. He's getting carried out. He's getting helped out of here as AJ Styles. Because the guy attacked him, Daniels attacked him from behind. Sure, I mean, I don't think I don't think uh, AJ Styles is content or happy about the way the match How went. can you be? Even though the guy said he quits, Daniels said he quit, he wanted, he wanted to brutalize the guy. The guy just said he was going to murder him. Told his wife, you know, put the kids away. I mean, really, can't blame AJ. And ladies and shift gentlemen, gears here. Let's, right. shift let's, gears. let's shift on. gears. Let's talk about what's still on deck. What's still to come tonight here at Bound for Glory. 
Kurt Angle, the world hip. Well, before we can talk about Kurt Angle and Bobby Roode for the world heavyweight title, we are interrupted by the founder of this organization, by, by, a, by a man. It's not so happy with you. I, I read was Jared's that, Was that me or you? Oh, he loves me. That was directed at I, you. I thought maybe he was looking right through uh, me at you. I don't think he was looking at me. I think he was looking at you. If you were him, who would you say that to? Me or you? You. Anyway, continue. A man who we saw this past Thursday night on Impact Wrestling. The founder of this organization, Jeff Jarrett, telling Jeff Hardy, whatever you do, do not show up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, bound for glory, if Jeff Hardy has other thoughts in mind. Yeah, you know, Jeff Jarrett, none too happy about it. Jeffrey Nero Hardy. Three days ago, I told you not to step foot in this hellhole of a city they called Philadelphia. But guess what? I heard you did. And Jeff, this isn't about me not wanting you in some building or some town. No, this is about an entire organization wanting you to have no part of it. Jeff, the front office, the production people, the merchandise department, every stinking wrestler on the entire roster, roster wants to have nothing to do with you. As a matter of fact, everybody in this building tonight wants nothing to do with you, Hardy. They call this the city of brotherly love. Well, me and Karen, this is a true story. Yeah, you're singing a different song now, because me and Karen went out on the street today as people were filing in and nine out of ten people said they hope you jeff they hope they never ever ever see you in a wrestling ring again so i'm not doing this for myself i'm doing it for an entire organization and for every one of you in here tonight so, Hardy, I know you've been hiding in the parking garage, and then you moved to catering, and then you're in some secret hideout right now. Well, it's time for you to face the music. Nero, I'm calling you out, bitch. I brought you into this organization, and I'm taking you out of it tonight.
Jeff Hardy returned to Impact Wrestling. He said he was determined to regain the respect of the locker room. He wanted to regain confidence. He wanted to make things right with everyone. Response that he has received since his return, mixed. But in terms of Immortal, in terms of Jeff Jarrett, as we have heard Jarrett say on several occasions, including just now, he wants nothing to do with Jeff Hardy in this organization. I think he put it best, definitely a mixed reaction behind the scenes in regards to Jeff Hardy. Has his supporters and has his detractors yeah. at the same time. I just want to say one thing to you. <laughs> oh, man! That came across loud and clear. Yeah, I don't think Jared expected that, but... My God. Jeff Hardy showing that explosiveness, explosiveness only he could show. It's turned into just a fight out here. Impromptu fight between Jared and Hardy has all of a sudden turned in the favor of Jarrett. Whoa! Oh, but Hardy still got plenty of fight. Nasty here. And you can sense the crowd not happy that security has filled the ring to try and separate these two. But we don't have a referee out here. This is what that is. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Let this guy fight, man. Let him go. And now Jared, Jared back on Hardy again. Jared busts through security. Jared didn't seem like he was trying to break away too much. All he was.
judging by the crowd response to Jeff Hardy, Jarrett may be wrong when Jarrett says nobody wants you here. Yeah, I think you might be right about that. I don't, I don't think, uh, with due respect to Jeff Jarrett, he's not in a position to say what everybody else wants. I think it's more of what Jarrett's talking about from his own personal preference in regards to Hardy being here or not. Hardy has his supporters. Up next at Bound for Glory. It's all about power and control. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Hulk Hogan. I'd like to introduce you to my new business partner, Dixie Carter. There is no single name that defines an industry more than Hulk Hogan. This is it. This is the moment that we've been anticipating for months. Hulk Hogan, live in the Impact Zone. What makes you tick, Stinger? My agenda is the same today as it was five years ago when I walked through the doors here at TNA. And that is to give back to the sport of wrestling that I love so much, so much. I have no idea what's gotten into you, but this cannot continue. You have to put me in this position. What it's about is you have been gone. What do you mean? If you have something to say to me, say it. I've been saying it no, all along. This cryptic language. No, quiet and this. listen to me. I've been saying it all along, Dixie. You're just not listening to me. Yes, I screwed you out of your company. Why? Is this a legacy that you want to leave behind? This is it right here. Who the hell do you think you are? I'm the stinger, and I'm not done yet. You know what cockroaches do? They spread disease. You're a disease, Eric. And that disease is spread to Hulk, but it's only a matter of time before Hulk's eyes are open. And the real Hulk Hogan stands up. It's not gonna happen, Sting, no matter how hard you try. It is always gonna be Hogan and Bischoff. You still got it, Hulk. This is not gonna happen. I'm gonna drop a bombshell on this company next week. It's gonna change this business forever. This is the end of the line. This has been the greatest career I could have ever dreamed of. At the end of the day, Hulkamania had the longest run of anybody in this business. And now it's time to put Hulkamania to rest. Is there anybody that's buying this stuff about retirement? There is nothing Hulk that's sacred in this business any longer. I am so sick of you. I can't stand you. You want to wrestle? Hell no, I'll never wrestle you. You want to fight? I'll fight you, Stinger. I'll fight you in Bound for Glory. And if you can beat me, I'll give the company back to you and Dixie Carter. The fate of the company is at stake as the immortal Hulk Hogan and the insane icon Sting prepare for war. Ladies and gentlemen, for years, Hulk Hogan has gone to any lengths to avoid having to face Sting one-on-one, -on -one, even to the point of announcing his retirement on Impact Wrestling. But after Sting defeated Ric Flair, he is in line to have a fight with Hogan, a fight Taz, for the power and control of this organization, plain and simple. Well, we said it earlier, I mean, the company that we work for, and that all those wrestlers backstage in that locker room, all the production people, all of these thousands of fans here in Philadelphia, millions of people watching at home, the company, Impact Wrestling, TNA, it's hanging in the balance right now. The power, will Hogan maintain that power? That's the question. Will Sting get that power? Taz, in terms of the big picture, have we had a match as important as this in the entire history of this company when you think of what's at no. stake here? I, I, no way. I mean, th th listen, we've seen over the years, not just here in this company, but companies all over the place, different stipulations. The company is on the line here. I mean, hello, that's pretty huge. I mean, I think that's the biggest stipulation you could have in a match. Stakes could not get any higher. Sting, if he is able to be victorious tonight, one would anticipate he turns the company back over to Dixie Carter. But on the other hand, if it's Hogan who wins, then Immortal, Hogan, Bischoff and company, they're still large and in charge. Well, absolutely, and that, that remains to be seen, and we're at that point now. So we're gonna know, we'll have that answer in a little while here, so uh, I'm excited, I mean, to see what happens. It's gonna be a straight up fight. I, two well, let's legends. talk about that. Okay. The fact that it's going to be a fight. And from what we've seen from, from Sting for the past several months, to the point we call him the insane icon, he may have the advantage when it comes yep. to a fight. I, I think you might be right. He may. But we shall see. And I think we're going to find out any second here. Let's find out now. 
bowling contest is between two of the biggest superstars in the history of professional wrestling. Introducing first from Venice Beach, California, the immortal. exactly what this is going to be. What's this here? What's all? What's all? Uh... Son, as we hear now, he is 
He's the referee. And if anybody knows Sting, it's Flair. How can you stack the deck anymore against Sting? Not just Sting, Dixie Carter also. My God, she looks so panicked and nervous. Can't blame her. These men, household names, massive, massive names in our industry's history and legacy. With both these guys, and uh, neither of them will make. I, I doubt they'll make any mistake. They won't do anything risky or stupid in that regard. Or, you know, lose their cool. Hogan hops up in the face of Sting. Hogan just blew this place up. And the crotch chop fires up the insane icon. Shirt in the face of Flair, and here we go. Overhand rights, double cross chop, and then a chop right into the throat of Sting by Hogan. Hogan has been through so many battles, so many wars. It's like he's five, six, seven steps ahead of most of his opponents. So clever in that ring. Sting gonna try and break through the nerve hole by Hogan and does. The series of breaks comes off the ropes, but then Hogan catches him with the clothesline. Sting, he sure was, almost if he fell into the trap, right? Yeah. You got to be careful. You got Flair right out there. And a lot of stuff going on here. You got to be careful if you sting. Hogan, the clubbing blow, drops Sting. And then says, get up to your feet. And when he does, he rakes the back. I rake by Hogan. See how Hogan just... Times everything he does. He doesn't rush into anything. He's always had amazing timing to drill somebody. He's controlling the pace. He's controlling uh -oh, uh -oh. the tempo. And he tosses Sting out to the floor. And now Flair taking the jacket off. Has it wrapped around the throat of Sting? The chops, the rights, the lefts, and of course, dirtiest player in the game, low blow. Right in front of Dixie Carter. Flair assaulted Sting right in front of Dixie Carter, man. And, and, oh, and the, another, another low blow, this time courtesy of Hogan. And it's not like the referee's going to do a damn thing to stop it because it's Bischoff's kid. Well, that's just... Hogan is just picking apart Sting. It's the fight that we anticipated, and... Ah. Hogan now gnawing, biting on the head of Sting. I'll tell you something right now, Hulk Hogan is not, has not become the most successful wrestler in the history of our industry, because he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. What the hell is going on there? Some kind of an object passed from Flair to Hogan. Was you he... tell him, next time he messes with me, I'll knock his damn teeth out. Who said he used a spike to the head of Sting? And now the involvement of Flair. Oh, my God. Hogan still got the weapon. Hit Sting in the head with it again. Oh, God. 
Look at this, just violent rage by Hulk Hogan on the skull of Sting. You see the true colors of these individuals when you have a match that, that has this much importance. Yeah, Sting. Sting seems to be a uh, split wide open. continues to flow like a faucet from the head of Sting, running down his face. Oh, got that weapon in hand again, as I saw Flair hand it to him, to Hulk, but here comes Stinger. No weapon, just a couple of good old right hands. It's tough for Sting to maintain his focus on the task at hand. He dropped down to the floor to chase Flair around the ring. But he's got to concentrate on, on Hogan if he can. You're exactly right. But if Sting takes his eye off Hogan too long, that could be Dunsville ended for Sting. Big windup. Big right that drops Hogan. And again, Sting in pursuit of Flair, who backpedals, but now Sting catches him on the far side. Hell, whatever, whatever Flair had, Sting stole it from him. And Hogan oh, whoa, 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 is oh. As Hogan gets to his feet, Sting using that, whatever that is, that weapon to spike Hogan now in the head. Oh my God. Oh man, look at Hogan's look at face. Look the damage that's been done to the head and face of Hogan as well. Sting relentless. Boots to the midsection and a big overhand right to the top of the head. Gonna head to the corner. Yeah. Usually means Stinger splash. Hogan's in trouble. Oh! Flair gets caught with a right for his trouble. Again, Stinger splash to the back of Hogan who goes into the corner. Yeah, the surgical repair back of Hulk Hogan. Multiple surgeries. Attempt at the Scorpion. Oh my God. He's got step one. He's got the legs hooked. He's got to make the big turn. He's got to step over. He's close. Just imagine this. Oh my God, on Hogan's body but his back operations, the knee replacements. He's tapping out. He's tapping with the referee, Bischoff's son. You don't want to say it. Oh, my God. The yeah. kid Hogan tapped out. Sting wins the fight. Sting takes back power. Chance for Dixie Carter to be back in the driver's seat. I can't believe this. Oh, no. Here comes Immortal. Bischoff leading the way. Oh, my God. Sting is going to pay for this dearly. Oh. Bully Ray has a chair. Gunner has a chair. Scott Steiner as well. Continue to beat the hell out of Sting. No, 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 no. It's Abyss, right? You know, our cameras catch backstage over the shoulder of the monster Abyss. I can't believe that Jackson James called for the bell when Hogan was tapping. He didn't want to do it. The kid didn't want to do it. What? And he takes the steel chair out of the hands of his own father. Oh my God, no. Oh. The hell? Bischoff just took out his own son.
asking Hulk for help. Sting just asks Hulk to help him. He ain't gonna help you! of my life, 
I have given everything to this business. 13 years of my life, I've sacrificed time for my family, sacrificed a lot of things that the everyday guy doesn't get to have, be on the road 250 days plus a year. I'll tell you why I'm going to remain the World Heavyweight Champion at Bound for Glory. I've waited two and a half years for the ability to not only have a shot at the World Heavyweight title, but to win it. It doesn't matter how many times you win it. When you win the World Heavyweight title, it feels like the first time. And when you have that, you have a passion for what you do, and you know what you do is so important, you want to hang on to that title. Robert Roode doesn't have that experience of being a World Heavyweight Champion. Robert Roode is the one with the pressure on him. Robert Roode is the one that's carrying the world on his shoulders. There is nobody on this roster that deserves to be world champion more than you. All the nights that we rode the roads together on the phone with your boys saying they missed their daddy, it comes down to bound for glory. You're the one, Bobby. You're the one. You earned the right to face Kurt Angle at Bound for Glory. You earned that right. You can do this, I know you can. You have fought long and hard, 13 years to be exact. And I believe I'm looking at championship caliber right here. I've been training my ass off to remain champion. You think you're gonna show me up? I'm the Olympic gold medalist. I'm the world heavyweight champion. The one thing that you need to know about me is that come Bound for Glory, nothing is gonna prevent me from walking out with that world heavyweight championship. Bobby Roode takes on the Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle for the World Heavyweight Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the main event on the biggest show of 2011. World Heavyweight Title Showdown at Bound for Glory is now. First of all, making his way to the ring from right Toronto, right. Ontario, Canada. He is the number one contender for the heavyweight championship of the world, Bobby Roode. For weeks, we have heard Impact Wrestling fans show that they believe they've been greeting Bobby Roode with the champ, next world champ. It's time to see if Bobby Roode 13 years of sacrifice and dedication will pay off. Is it Bobby Roode's time? And now, introducing his opponent from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, weighing in at 221 pounds, professional wrestling's only Olympic gold medalist and the current reigning and defending Concerns for Kurt Angle. Not only the fact that he's got to defend the world heavyweight title against Bobby Roode, but, but think of what Kurt Angle has just witnessed when it comes to the group that he's aligned with, when it comes to Immortal. Uh, well, that's a great observation, Mike. I, you know, I, I, I would assume that Kurt Angle is much more focused than that. He'll be in the zone here. He understands. That it's about that World Heavyweight Championship right there and the threat that Bobby Roode poses for that title tonight, right now. But you're right, it might be in the back of Kurt's head, in his mind, that Hogan basically just told the mortal, adios. And the company's <laughs> now in the hands, back in the hands, I would assume, of Dixie Carter. But right now, World Heavyweight title, we go. We saw Angle try to mentally 
try to physically challenge and, and try to break Bobby Roode in anticipation of this world title match. But Bobby Roode survived all the tests, and now, Bobby Roode, you have just one more hurdle to overcome, but damn, it's a big hurdle. Look at that, oh, go for that cross face. Where are they? Kurt Angle dipping his chin, preventing Rude from clasping across his jaw. You notice Kurt has a uh, his quad wrapped up. He's actually got a slight pull in his groin. I mean, he's overtraining for this contest. I mean, I was talking Shows to him. Shows you the importance yeah. of the match. We talked about it yesterday. I saw him at the hotel, and it's like he's just been training real hard for this, for this title defense. Rude with the early edge, the early advantage, and not afraid to go out to the floor. Angle rolls back in, and that's probably a benefit to Rude because you got to beat the champ in the ring, but as he comes in, Angle with the kick. I'm not sure if it went to the midsection or a low blow. Couldn't tell, couldn't tell, but that's all Kurt needs probably to slow down Bobby Rude. Kurt is a master at keeping the pressure on his opponent. He keeps that pressure on because he's so prepared and so fit. The incredible cardio and off the snap of the suplex, he goes right for the cover. Kurt Angle's a freaking machine, my man. Beyond being in great shape, he's a machine. He's working the midsection of Bobby Roode. He's got a reverse gut wrench right now, and he's riding Bobby Roode. All his weight is on the chest. Kurt Angle was an amazing freestyle and Greco-Roman wrestler, which is, that's working from the top and just working classes, and, and that's exactly what Kurt does so well. He'll ride a guy while he's hurting. And then you gotta be careful you don't peel off one of those suplexes, but the offense is obviously pinpointed towards the midsection. Perfectly placed knee, the follow cover for two, as Rude powers out, and then Angle right back on the pin. Kurt will go right back, there you go, right back to that. Reverse gut wrench or reverse bear hug, whatever. You see that under and over grip right there? That's a tremendous grip. We can get a shot of Kurt's hands. That type of grip is where all your power is. Instead of clasping your fingers, you clasp your palms together and squeeze your thumbs together, and that grip is extremely tight. Only back up to his feet. Reels off the elbows to the side of the head of Angle to break that grip. And now comes back the series of rights and then goes for the clothesline. But Ooh, see how quick Angle not only ducked the clothesline, but goes from behind and catches Rude and connects with Suplex 1 still maintaining the grip. Which will maintain, wow. which will maintain that pressure on that midsection. Even though those German suplexes you're landing on the back of your head. Look at how Kurt really tightens up. He brings his elbows in. Here we go, here we go. Pin, leg hook, no, just two. Does the German a little bit different than most guys does angle because he brings his elbows close to his own body because that brings more explosiveness, explosiveness through his hips. Angle off whoa, the whoa. series of suplexes is going to go high risk. Don't normally see Kurt do this this early in a match. Quick, oh, oh my God! God. What a throw! What a toss by Root! Sending Angle all the way across the ring, my God! Kurt landed on the back of his head, it looked like. That was sick. Let's take another look at that. Let's see, let's see where Kurt lands. Bobby Root did two oh, oh, shoes. Face and head. Oh, oh my God. Tough on a watch each time. People don't realize what goes on in that ring and how physical this business really is. People don't get it. I shouldn't stereotype and say people don't. Most people don't. The casual fan, I don't think, realizes how physical of a game this really is. So tough when you haven't been in there, Taz. The exchange between champion and challenger. Big uppercut by Angle. His answer with the right hand by Rude. Angle comes back again, another uppercut. But for every uppercut, Rude connects with the right. Now a series of rights from Rude, trying to get the momentum rolling. Well, that's Rude's style, man. He'll get in there and slug it out with you. Get to a hockey fight with you. That's his, that's his deal, yeah, man. That's his background. Yeah. Peterborough, Ontario, Canada. Challenger shot into the corner. Explosive clothesline from the, from the corner. Takes down the champ. Groggy angle has 
his neck snap by Rudolph the ropes, who goes right for the pin. And, oof. Well, if there's any chink in the armor of Kurt Angle, it would be his neck. I mean, multiple upon multiple operations to that neck surgeries. And it's well documented. So Bobby Roode going after Kurt's neck, very smart. Wow. Released. Belly to belly by Angle. Leads to a pin attempt. And here we go. Two in. Ferocity of Kurt Angle in this match, realizing how tough this challenge is going to be. Rude able to float nice. over, connects with the boot, swinging this with the clothesline by Rude. But Angle wow. comes back and drops him with the DDT. Put him on his head. Here we go. Here Kurt we go. Again, the pin, and Kurt again in near fall. Well, Kurt realizes he understands. He understands that everybody, everybody in that mother is saying that Bobby Rude has got the more, all this momentum behind him, and he's been untouchable. He's been on fire. Kurt don't want to hear that. He don't want to know that this guy's a legit threat for that championship. Kurt Angle's eyes. That's a great shot right there. <laughs> Tried to take Rude up into the air, but it was blocked wow. and countered. Spinebuster style move. Out of Rude oh, to oh. a pin. Keep your cool there, Bobby Rude. Don't, don't get frustrated. Got to keep your cool here. Bobby Roode used to being a champion in the realm of being a tag team. That's what, you know, his background truly is. Bobby Roode could pull this off here and become world champ. Oh, that would be massive for this young man's career. Mets Angle sprints to the corner, stops Roode, and then takes him from the top and right into Got the him. pin. Oh, no. God. Talk about massive. That was a massive throw by Angle off the ropes. The Bound for Glory series. Bobby Roode victorious, outlasting 11 others. Three, nearly four months of matches, pay-per-view events, live arena events. Impact Wrestling, whoa, 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 put him in this position, and now, there it is, arm seized, cross face applied, submission hold, and ring positioning looks good. Kurt might tap here. Got that cross face in deep. Bobby Roode's been putting people out left and right with this hold. Kurt's gonna tap. You can just see Angle's fingers trembling as he anticipates the tap out. He tries to fight through the pain, so he does it. And Kurt, instead, uh, Kurt, he's, he's working on the he's ankle. He's got an ankle lock. And he turns it around into the ankle lock. My God. He's like a freaking magician, man. He's amazing the way he can get out of one hole and go to another. Unreal. Just when it looks like you can count Kurt Angle out, he pulls that one out of his bag of tricks, Taz, as you said. Phenomenal, excellent, excellent. Matt work yeah, by both this. these guys. Rude's got an answer, too. Momentum as he rolls through. Tremendous Matt work by both athletes. Champion and challenger. Kurt might tap out. He's got that in tight. Pressure applied to the head. And again, that surgically repaired neck of, of Kurt Angle by Rude. God. And now back to the head. Rude screaming out at Angle. Just tap. The longer this hold is on, the more pain Kurt's body's going to go through. And his neck, that neck has just been, whoa, 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 look at that, rolled through by Angle. What's he going to do here? Angle slam. There it is. Here's Kurt on top. Champion gets two. What a match here. Hold for hold. Excellent wrestling right here. Straight up. Nothing like it. Just what you would expect for the World Heavyweight title match at our biggest pay-per-view of the year. Ankle locks on. Patented submission hold applied. Rude's a long, long way from the ropes. Instead, rolls through, uses the free leg to kick off, still favoring the leg. Spinebuster plants him. Yeah, he's favoring that leg a lot is Bobby Rude. Not just... Ooh. No, gonna go bridging got Super got Fisherman! Oh, my God! Oh, God. <laughs> that Fisherman, man, that... Oh, God, he had it. it was so close. 
almost a dazed look on the face of Angle. I think the realization just set in that he was just this close to losing the World Heavyweight title. Again, the, here it is. Gonna go for the ankle lock one more time. And again, oh, the oh, oh, oh. This time leads to a pin. Oh. No. It's gonna go ankle slam again. Instead, countered by Rude, who hooks the arm. Kirk charges in. Got caught with the elbow from Rude in the corner. Root up to the middle rope. Referee put in the middle as a shield by Angle. Oh, and then the low blow. The referee never saw it. Oh, there it is. Angle slams him get on top. Good get him. Hook. <laughs> Going after that low blow, that might have been enough. Bobby Roode. Tough as hell. Digging down deep as Bobby Roode. Biggest match of his career, so you knew he would. Angle stalks. Angle measures. Who gets to his feet? And Kurt unleashes suplex one. Still in control. Again, that midsection of Bobby Roode has been worked on a lot by Kurt Angle. These German suplexes aren't helping Bobby Roode's ribs and abdomen area. Before he oh, goes, oh, that's he went for number three, but instead stopped by Roode. And again, he's got the arm and now cranking back on the head and the neck. What can he say? Oh, Kurt, Kurt oh, might the, be done. Look at, look at the hand of Angle. Kurt might be done here, Mike. going to tap right there. Nobody's Kurt's trying to dip his head out. He's inching over those ropes. Still a distance, still several feet before he gets a rope break. Gotta break it there, right? The hands under the he rope. Just broke the plane. Gotta broke break the plane it, yeah. the rope to get the break. What advantage for Rude when, when he has the cross face on? He has his hands across the eyes of Angle. Sure. Kurt can't, can't see, see where the ropes are, like a blind man. But when you've been in the ring for as many years as well, Kurt, like his second home. Battle tested. Kurt Angle's battle tested. But Bobby Roode is bringing the battle for sure. Our live audience is torn right here. Spear from Angle takes down Roode. Right to the midsection. Top. Again, that spear right to the abs of Bobby Roode. Kurt Angle's hurting that neck. Man, he's had... Bobby Roode's had that cross face on Kurt Angle's neck, on, it, on his head and shoulder and upper body many times in this match. That, I, Kurt's worn down. What is this? What is this? High risk off the top. Oh, my Roots God. Roode's on coming and goes right back to the submission. This has got to be in here. How many times can Roode get angled in this position when Kurt's able to escape? He slipped hook. out, he slipped out again. Goes angle slam, no luck. Rude stop, mock, attempt at the fisherman. Kurt floats over and hits the angle slam. Angle covered, far leg hook. Foot's over the rope anyway. Whoop. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And Kurt was using the ropes for leverage at the same time. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match. And still. Champion of the world, Kurt Angle! Well, it, it, Bobby Roode's hand broke the plane under the bottom rope. I understand what you're saying about the, rope, the ropes and everything, but I'm saying that, I mean, Kurt definitely cheated to get the win. And defense to referee Brian Heppy, he just didn't see it. Well, I, I, I hope there's a way that we can get another look at this, Taz. I'm going to confirm what, what you and I both believe we just saw. Guys in the truck, here we go, here we go. Yeah, that same angle to the side would be great if we had that. Watch Bobby Root's hand right here. Breaks the plane, but Angle uses the ropes for leverage at the same time. Yeah, Root got screwed big time. What a shame. That was a hell of a match. Doesn't matter, though. That was a great match. Bobby Root, extremely disappointed. Sometimes that's just the way it goes down, man.
Nothing to be ashamed about, Bobby. That was a hell of a match, hell of a fight. Get screwed. Kurt looks like he's hurting a little bit. And you can, you can sense the disappointment on the face of Rude. Ladies and gentlemen, on a night when Sting unites with Hulk Hogan, on a night when Dixie Carter takes back control of the company, Kurt Angle retains the world heavyweight title in controversial fashion.